how to use the jigsaw method specifically for the BATSOL program. Step 1. Plan out the reading materials and students into groups. Grab the reading materials from the mini library of the course. You will either have long textbook or many small articles or both. For the small articles, I want to make sure that my articles that I choose to group into one jigsaw session all relate to each other and are about a specific topic or create a debatable topic where a couple articles may be pro and a couple articles may be con. For the large textbook, I'm going to look at the different chapters and try to segment them out uh, based on the chapters. So let's say that I look at chapter one and it's pretty good. Chapter two looks pretty even in terms of size and difficulty, but chapter three is very long. So what I'm gonna do is create one segment is chapter one, another segment being chapter two, but then this segment is only the first half of chapter three and this is the final half of chapter three. So I've segmented into four different parts. The next thing is to look at how can I split the students into groups. Well, how many students do I have registered for class? So in a normal classroom, you will have 30 to 50 students. But for this demonstration, let's say that I only have 12 students. I then divide that by, well, whatever number evenly divides into it. And then I can segment my reading material based on this number. Or I can do it the other way and look at, all right, I've already segmented the reading materials and I know that I already have four segments. So I'm gonna place four here. Then I'm gonna divide 12 by four, which is simply three. And I know that I need four groups of three students per group. All right, I'm ready for class. Step two, group the students in the classroom. Okay, I have 12 students, they all showed up, and they're even sitting into four different rows with three students in each row. Perfect. So I can easily just say, great, everyone in row one, you guys are now group one and row two you're in a group, row three is in a group, and so on. So I can group them this way. Then I'm going to assign a number to each group. So I'll say this is group one, remember that number, group two, three, and four, remember your numbers. Now I'll tell them to get into uh, a position in the classroom where they are sitting together. Great. The next thing I need to do is to give each student within the group a letter so that within group one, each student is going to have a letter A, B, and C. And group two, they are also going to have A, B, and C, and so on. Okay, now that this student knows that he is one A, this student knows that he is one B, and this student knows that she is one C they all can designate themselves with this number and letter system. This will come in handy later. Another way to group the students in the classroom it takes a little bit more preparation, but it might be easier because we know that students often sit together with their friends or with the students that they speak to often and they're very comfortable with. So if you want to create more of a random selection, here's how to do that. First, prepare these type of index cards or small notepads or note cards that have the number and the letter already on them. So I would create, I know that I have four groups, so I would create uh, 1A, 1B, 1C, and 2A, 2B, 2C, and so on. And then I would mix them up like this so that when I hand them out, they are a little bit more of a random choice and they're not going to just be grouped with the students they're sitting next to. This is also good because 
the students will then have something to refer to if they forget their letter or number. Also, if I want to change up the groups uh, each day, let's say that I noticed on the first day that group one was very strong. All of the students there were, were very good students. They understood the material really well. They really dug deep into it. But group number two were, they were all full of, you know, it was just full of the weaker students and they didn't dig as deeper and they had a little of a tougher time. Um, so I want to just randomize it up. I don't want them to stay in those groups for the whole week. So I can just ask for this card back and then randomly distribute it again. All right, after I've asked them to go into their first number groups, I'm then going to assign the reading material to the number groups. The reading material of the day should be in the syllabus and each student should already have it. And I have already separated the reading material into four different segments. So I will explain what segments for each group and I will say group one, you guys are doing chapter one, group two, chapter two, and group three, you're gonna do the beginning half of chapter three, group four, you're gonna do the final half of chapter three. Now that each student knows what they're going to be reading, the next thing they need to do is read it. Some groups may choose to read it all on their own, and some might split it up between themselves and then discuss. But it's very important that they just digest what they're reading. And then, while they're discussing, they really have to take on what was that article about? What did we learn about it? And each student needs to have the idea that they are going to learn through this discussion enough about that article so that they can explain it to others. All right, so each numbered group is going to read and then discuss their article and their segment of the reading material that I gave them well enough that they can teach it to others. Step four, change to letter groups and teach and discuss. So now I'm going to give them, after I've given them time to read, I've given them time to discuss it, I want them to change it up. So now is where the letters come into play and I say, all right, all of the A's, I want you to uh, group together and sit together here. All the B's, I want you to group together and sit together here. And the C's, you guys get together here. All right, everybody go ahead and move your seats. Great, good job. Okay, the first thing you'll notice here is that each letter group, so these are all the letter A's, right? And so I'll refer to them as the letter group. Each one is a different color, and the color represents the different segment of the reading material that they studied. So you can see that one letter group has the combined knowledge of all of the reading materials, and that's why they are going to teach each other. Now, if I separated it out in terms of chapter, a great way to begin teaching would be, all right, the students would figure out, hey, who read chapter one? Oh, well, that's this guy. So group one, the person from group one, he should probably start to teach first. And so what he will do is he will teach the other members of this letter group what he studied. Now, he's not going to read the material to them. He's just going to give them a summary and his own thoughts and thoughts from his group and how they felt that this material, why it's important, or how they can use it, and how they interpreted the material that they read. Each student within this letter group will then go over their own article or their own segment of the reading material, teaching it to the others. And while he's doing this, the others should be taking notes, but it's not a lecture and it's not a presentation from this student. It's actually a discussion. And so these students are actually trying to ask questions and make comments about what this person is trying to teach. All right, so it's a discussion at the same time. After all of the students have gone and taught their segment, well then the group should remain intact 
and then talk about the topic as a whole. So what is the big picture here? What do all of these chapters or all of these articles have in common? What are they trying to express? What are we supposed to understand from them? Uh, how can we apply it? Do our experiences um, agree with what we've just read or disagree? And how and why? And how do we feel about it? Um, maybe someone has a real big question about it um, and then they, they can offer their answers. All right, so they really need to dig deeper and discuss the issue as a whole. All right. The next thing to do is return to the number groups and discuss again. Now, this might sound a bit repetitive, and you might say, well, they already discussed it. What's, what's the big deal here? Well, notice that from the letter groups, I can really imagine, and I saw in this <laughs> demonstration here, that one of the letter groups really dug deep and they really thought really deep and hard about uh, the material that they were studying and they really got a lot out of it. But another letter group, let's say the group B, let's say that they just uh, skimmed the surface, they weren't really into talking about it, a bit shy, um, and they didn't really understand it. They had more questions than answers. So they didn't really get much out of it. Well, now that I've returned to number groups, you can see that this discussion, whatever group A discussed, he can then refer to that and talk to that, talk to the other discussions of the lettered groups. So that if group A had a really good discussion and group B felt kind of left down and just uh, didn't get much out of this lettered discussion, at least A can help fill in those gaps. And so they can really discuss all about what they've learned so far. And then let's say that A says, oh, wow, I really learned a lot from, from group two. Oh, really? I didn't get anything from there. I was really confused by it. But, you know, our article says this, but I really I always had this question on it. Oh, well, you know, group three answered that in my group really well, and this is what they said. But I didn't really get what group four was all about. Oh, well, yeah, my group talked about that as well. And, you know, we really understood that group four was, uh, that segment was really, really important to what we were studying. Oh, okay, and this is how the big picture really fits in. Wow, my group didn't get into that at all. We were discussing it from a totally different perspective. Okay, so that is what this uh, final number group discussion should be about. After that, and when that has, you know, kind of naturally gone into, um, it kind of quiets down or they don't know what to talk about anymore. Um, as the instructor, I will then bridge this into the final step. And I'll get all the students to come back together and I will facilitate a class-wide discussion. So this is the time that I want the students to really digest the whole discussions from the day, um, I want to hear what were the main points of the topic, and I might start this discussion with certain questions like, what was most important? What did you guys learn? Um, what was most relevant to you? Do you feel you gained anything from it as a teacher? All right, and I'll just try and get them to start this conversation as a whole group, and I'll let it just run wild. Even if it gets into a debate, that would be great. Of course, I'm going to try to control that debate and let them say, oh, I really agree with it because of this, but no, this the article said this, and oh, well, you know, this is how we can really use it in the future. Um, no, I don't get any point of this at all. <laughs> and so this is a great way to just allow the students to digest it as a whole group. Maybe this student really had a question from each group and never got a good answer, so he just wants to pose it to the entire class and see what comes out of it. And this is a great time for me as the instructor to also step in and kind of give my thoughts on what the main points are and to also, because I've gone around to the class, to each group, and I've listened to their discussions, maybe I want to summarize what I heard from all of the discussions so that the students can really gain an overall and feel that they've uh, really finished the day um, 
by putting all of these ideas, all of these opinions, and everything that they've studied uh, throughout the day, and put it into one idea. All right, and that is the Jigsaw Method.